Everyone loves watching really fast races and seeing athletes do their best, but it can be disappointing when a great time is not counted because the wind assistance was too strong. Does a tailwind really make such a big difference? To understand this, it's important to consider sprint mechanics. When sprinters run, they push against the ground with each stride, applying force in a downward direction. This force is what propels them forward and helps them achieve their top speed. However, the wind blows horizontally, not vertically downwards. This means that it can't directly assist a sprinter in generating ground force. Yet, the direction and speed of the wind can greatly influence the outcome of the race, potentially changing the winner. At the 2021 Diamond League in Eugene, Andre de Grasse was able to take full advantage of the excessive wind of 2.9 meters per second to win the 100 meters with a blazing time of 9.74, outperforming a highly competitive field of world-class sprinters. Interestingly, de Grasse ran 15 hundredths of a second faster than his personal best set three weeks earlier at the Tokyo Olympics. However, the rest of the field performed slower or only marginally better than their personal records. This confirms the fact that most most sprinters, according to statistics, don't use the benefit of a good tailwind to their full advantage. The analysis of the top 100 all-time performances in the 100 meters shows that a tailwind exceeding the allowable limit doesn't result in faster times. In fact, the average time for wind legal performances is even slightly faster, and that's because, as previously mentioned, the wind doesn't assist in generating ground force and therefore, it cannot improve your top end speed. However, one can still benefit from a tailwind as it reduces air resistance, allowing a sprinter to cover more ground in the air at the same energy cost. This means that with a substantial tailwind, you will not run any faster, but you can run fast using less energy. With this in mind, it is easy to see why Andre de Grasse has almost identical split times in the first 50 meters, regardless of wind conditions, as evidenced by his wind aided 974 and his 989, produced in still conditions. With a strong tailwind, he expends less energy to reach the halfway point, thus saving enough to generate sufficient force at each ground contact in order to maintain speed better and eventually pull ahead. By contrast, most sprinters push themselves too hard, too early, and as a result, they tire too soon, unable to generate the ground forces corresponding to higher performance. Well, again, speed is a product of the force applied to the ground, and if that force is lacking, you are going to slow down, and nothing can change that, not even a hurricane, let alone so-called speed endurance. The need for ground force production emphasizes the importance of relaxation as well. Running relaxed conserves energy, enabling the use of more power to generate sufficient ground forces in the later stages of the race. So the next time you see a great time marked as wind-aided, remember, it's not the wind, it's the athlete.